Sahara is a big piece of territory. It essentially extends from the Nile River and the Sudan all the way across northern Africa, up to the Mediterranean Sea, and out to the Atlantic, all the way down to the Western Sahara and southern Morocco. This is a big chunk of territory. So to ride across this stretch of land on a camel would take you a while. So let's have a look at, at sort of basic physical characteristics, and then we'll look at some of the cultural characteristics of this area. Uh, for those of you that have a geological bent, and there's a few of you in the audience, I can tell by the way you twitch when we talk about geology, uh, this entire area sits on what's called the African Shield. And this is a really, really, really old area that's incredibly stable. No major volcanoes, no major earthquake activities. It's really, really stable, really, really old. And it goes back over 600 million years. So it's a, it's a really old piece of landscape. But the Sahara itself is incredibly young. This is a very, very recent landscape in geologic time like that. And so the Sahara is incredibly young, and that really shapes what goes on physically and culturally in this area, as we'll see in a little while. It's a very, very young landscape. <laughs> Those of you that know about plate tectonics, I'm sure everybody's heard of that now. It's a pretty well-established theory. Uh, you can see nicely how South America and Africa sort of fit together. If you go back in geologic time, uh, about two billion years ago, You've got these very, very old, what are called basement rocks, which define the landscape of both South America and Africa. So there's some geologic connection there. You can sort of think about the, uh, the age of this landscape. And if you look at the little globe at the bottom, you can see all these land masses sort of fit together in the uh, last version of Pangaea. And of course, as we know today, the Atlantic Ocean is spreading apart, so Africa is moving further away from the Western Hemisphere, and we're all getting closer to Tokyo. So in a few million years, we'll just be a suburb of China. <laughs> Mountain building process, there are actually lots and lots of mountains in the Sahara. And one of the things that is surprising to a lot of people, because you think, well, the Sahara is just this vast landscape of just sand dunes, just lots of sand. Actually, it's mostly mountains. It's mostly rocks and mountains, lots and lots of big clusters of mountains. Most of these are fairly old, about 250 or so million years ago. But the limestones, the depositions, contain very important sources of what we call paleo water, really old water. And oil, of course, is a big part of this picture. And some of you may have read in the newspaper, probably about six months ago, there was an interesting story about what our good friend close ally now, Muammar Gaddafi, is doing in Libya, they're actually sucking water out of the Sahara Desert. There's this whole artesian basin in the central uh, Sahara Desert that has been sucked out by the Libyans. And the Egyptians are really concerned because there's a theory that that basin is linked to the Nile, and that if they suck enough water out of all the Nile water, it's actually going to go down into the basin, and Egypt will be dry, which is not a pretty thought. Only 15% of the Sahara is actually sand. Right? It's 85% mountains and gravel rock plains. And for the first two weeks that we were in this region, we couldn't find a sand dune. We sent out expeditions. We had camel drives. We had people going out looking for sand dunes. Because everybody said, I want a picture of a Saharan sand dune. Not one in sight. Lots and lots of pebbles, gravel rock plains, mountains. No sand dunes. Right? You have to really look look for sand dunes. All of the yellow here is this, this uh, sedimentary or limestone base. And of course, this is all important sources of oil and uranium. Right? The, the mineral deposits here over the last few million years are uh, very important. So in the uh, North African area, of course, and down in the Gulf of Guinea, around Nigeria, lots and lots of oil resources. We were very, very close in Agadez, which you can see there on the map, a little red dot, very close to a source of uranium. Some of you may remember a year or so ago, two years ago, that whole kerfuffle about uh, the, the US going, sending somebody into uh, Niger to find out if they were selling uranium to whomever. I don't